Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. In the last video, we studied about the fuzzy rule based system and looked into multiple antecedents and consequence using conjunctives and disjunctives. In this lecture, we will look at how to graphically represent the rule based system with few techniques of inference. And mainly, we have three different techniques that is the Mamdani method, Sugino method, and the Sukumoto method. In this lecture, we'll be covering the Mamdani method. So let's get started. Let us consider a simple rule system where the rule has two antecedents and one consequent as follows. As you can see here, we have two antecedents that is if x1 is a1 and x2 is a2. And then we have one consequent which is then y is b. Here x1 and x2 are our inputs and y is an output and a1, a2 and b they are all fuzzy sets or fuzzy numbers. Now this is a case of a single rule and when we have multiple rules we can rewrite it as if x1 is a1k and x2 is a2k then yk is bk where k is equal to 1, 2 up till r. This means that k is a variable that is used to represent how many rules are there. Now coming back to the Mamdani systems, we will be considering a Mamdani system which has two inputs. That is we will be considering a two input Mamdani system. As in we will be having an x1 and x2 as inputs and y will be the output. And Mamdani systems comprise of two different cases. We have a max min inference method and max product inference method. Now the word inference means to reach a particular conclusion based on some hypothesis evidence or statement associated with a logic or knowledge. So let's take a look at each of these cases one by one starting with the Maxman inference method. Now I'll be explaining the Maxman inference method with the help of an example so that you can understand this concept in a much better manner. Here we have a simple two rule system where each rule has two antecedents and one consequent. As you can see here we have two rules. Rule one is given as if x1 is a11 and x2 is a21, then y1 is b1. And rule 2 is given as if x1 is a12 or x2 is a22, then y2 is b2. As you can see here, each of the rules has two antecedents and it has one consequent. Here x1 and x2 are the inputs of rule 1 and y1 is the output of rule 1. Similarly, x1 and x2 are the inputs of rule 2 and y2 is the output of rule 2. And here a11, a21, b1 are the fuzzy sets of rule 1 and a12, a22 and b2 are the fuzzy sets of rule 2. And here we are also provided with the values of x1 and x2 that is x1 is 2.5 and x2 is 3. Then we are also presented with the fuzzy sets of a11, a21, b1 and a12, a22 and b2. And mu over here represents the membership values for each of these fuzzy sets. So what we need to do first is we have to find out the corresponding membership values for x1 and x2. And first let's take x1 in case of rule 1. So we have 2.5 and let us mark over here as 2.5. And when we extend this line we will get the corresponding membership value. So let us extend this and we get the corresponding membership value as 0.8. Therefore, 0.8 is a corresponding membership value for x is equal to 2.5. Next, we have to find out the corresponding membership value for x2. And we have x2 is equal to 3. So we have 3 and we will extend it to find the membership value. So when we extend 3, we get 0.4. Therefore, 0.4 is a membership value for x2 is equal to 3. Now, a very important thing to remember is that if the rule is connected by an AND operator, then we have to take the minimum of the two membership values of x1 and x2. However, if the rule is connected by an OR operator, then you should take the maximum of the membership values of x1 and x2. Now, in case of rule 1, it is connected by an AND operator. And hence we should take the minimum of 0.8 and 0.4 which is obviously equal to 0.4. And since the minimum is equal to 0.4, 0.4 is 
we are going to extend this point 4 onto the output which is y1. And when we extend point 4, we will get it as this. Now I will shade this area and therefore this becomes our output area y1. Similarly, we should do for rule 2 as in we have to find out the corresponding membership values for x1 and x2 in rule 2's graphs. So first we have here, we have to take 2.5 and when we find out 2.5's corresponding membership value, we will get it as 0.3. That is 2.5's corresponding membership value will be 0.3. And when we do for x2, we have to take 3 and find out its corresponding membership value and we will get it as 0.7. Therefore, the corresponding membership value over here will be 0.7 for x2 is equal to 3. Now remember I said that if we have the OR operator or the OR connective, then we have to take the maximum of membership value of both x1 and x2. So here we have 0.7 in case of x2's membership value and 0.3 in case of x1's membership value. And we know that maximum of 0.3 and 0.7 is 0.7. And therefore, we have to extend 0.7 onto the output graph. So, we will extend 0.7 and we will get it as this. And then we shade this output region. Now, as you can see from y1 and y2, it is noted that these two triangles have been truncated or cut in the form of a shorter trapezium. And hence, this particular membership function will be called as a truncated membership function. And that is what comes or that is what is an output in case of maximum inference method. Now let's draw the graph for the aggregated output y by combining y1 and y2. So when we combine y1 and y2, we'll get it as this graph. And then we'll find out the aggregated output y. In y1, the membership value we obtained was 0.4. And in y2, the membership value that we obtained was 0.7. So let us put it in this graph. So we have 0.4. And 0.4 will be depicted till here. And we have 0.7. And 0.7 will be over here. And then let's shade the area that is covered by the membership function. Therefore, this entire region becomes the aggregated output y. So this is how you represent in case of Mamdani method. Now the next step is to find out the defacified value y star. As in we need to find out the crisp output. And to do that, we can obtain it with the help of any defacification methods that we have studied in the previous lectures. If any of you have any doubts in how to do the defacification methods, please refer lecture 9 and 10 of a fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. So this is how you do the maximum inference method for the Mamdani system. Next, we'll move on to the max product inference method. In the case of the max product inference method, I have taken the same example where we have a two rule system having two antecedents and one consequent as follows and again I have taken the inputs as 2.5 and 3 and I have represented both rule 1 and rule 2 in a graphical manner. And the first step again is to find out the corresponding membership values for 2.5 and 3 which I have already found out as per the previous example. Then we have to check which type of connective it is. Since it is an connective we have to take the minimum membership value. And since the minimum of 0.8 and 0.4 is 0.4, we are going to extend 0.4 onto the output graph. So when we extend 0.4, we will get it like this. Now as we have seen in the previous case, that is in the maximum inference method, we had shaded this area or we had truncated the given fuzzy set in such a way that finally we had obtained a trapezium or a trapezoidal figure. But now in the case of max product inference method, what we are going to do is we are going to scale down the particular triangular fuzzy set. As in instead of truncating it completely, we are just going to scale it down over here like this. Therefore, this region becomes our output y1. Similarly, we will do for rule 2. Again, we have 0.3 and 0.7 and since we are using the OR connective, we have to take the maximum membership value. Here the maximum membership value is 0.7, so we will extend 0.7 and then we need to create a scale membership function. Then we will have it 
like this. And therefore, this region becomes our output function. So here we have a scaled membership function, as you can see here. This is what we obtain from a max product inference method. Now in our output graph, that is our graph that is combining both y1 and y2, again we have to put the membership values of y1 and y2. So we have 0.4 and 0.7 which we'll mark here. We have 0.4 over here and we'll have 0.7 over here. And then we need to draw the scale membership function. So in this case, the scale membership function will be like this. And here the scale membership function will be like this. Therefore, our aggregated output function y will be this entire area. And after we do this, we have to do the defalsification so that we can obtain a crisp value y star by using any of the defalsification methods that you have studied. So this is how you represent the mass product inference method of a Mamdani system. Now, very important thing to note here is that in both the methods of Mamdani, that is max min and max product inference method, we are following the same steps to obtain the final result. However, the only difference over here is that in case of the max min method, we are using a truncated membership function and in case of the max product method, we are using a scaled membership function and based on that, we obtain the defalsified value y star. So this is how you do the Mamdani method. I hope both these concepts were very clear to all of you. If any of you have any doubts in any of the methods, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Either me or another viewer will surely help you out. If you found this video to be useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at the next graphical technique of inference which is Sukino method. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.